How's everybody feeling, my friends? Oh, oh yeah, good people, them at the doorstep singing, please let them in. Open the door. Oh, oh yeah, good people, them at the doorstep. Back in 1996, trying to be, you know, a big ska band. It was all Larry Gordon's idea. You know, we were talking about putting together this ultimate vintage, full scale, the Hawaiian style, full on, rude, almost two tones, sharp, orchestrated. What else? Original, straightforward, traditional ska, rock steady, reggae music band. I want to hear you make some noise on three, people. One, two, three, yeah! Word on the street, there's a party tonight, I hear. I tried so long just to hear those sweet songs again. Records spinning round, day and night, day and night. Gonna make you feel gonna make you feel right. Jump and move, gonna make you jump and move Get your body groove To this island sound Swing and sway, swing and sway To the sound today Where I was living was a place that we call the Pressure House and it was a place by the Rainbow Bridge on the North Shore behind, there used to be a Chevron there. You could go back and not much around it, just this little broken down looking house that we all lived in, squeezed into, but we had the best parties. Make some noise on three. One, two, three, hey! Look in my eyes, so when you will see the places I've been, the good people I meet. And there you'll envision which stands as one. 
musicians even though it was some people that didn't know how to play music playing with us and that was fun too you know <laughs> good good times at the pressure house shirt is like when you look at go jimmy goes sound yeah you know and, and, and you sit it, it's like it's like britney spears it's like you know hit me baby one more time right oh you're gonna hit it one more time oh yeah probably you three are. four times yeah well and, and the main thing about them is they're gonna hit you with that first vocal and then the second harmony and then that third harmony and then and just right like, there it's like hit me instant. baby yeah 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 and they were writing stuff that nobody else was writing. Not the reggae scene, not the ska scene, not the soul scene, none of those. Today, just try, make it back country. Run into us today. Just try, make it through singing, get taggy. Hey, Wayne, I'm Buck from the Toasters, and I'm here to spill the beans on Go Jimmy Go. <laughs> All the salacious stories I'm sure they never told you. The camera's really off. Tell us how you really feel about, uh... <laughs> yeah, those assholes. So when I think about, uh, Go Jimmy Go's music, not to get cosmic or whatever, the place that you live really informs your music. It really does. When I think about my band over in New York or folks from L.A., whether it be Hepcat, I definitely hear L.A. in them or I hear in the slack as I hear New York. And for Go Jimmy Go, you hear it clearly. The vibes of, of, of Hawaii, the sounds funneling themselves through Jamaican music. They call it the island sound known the world around. And you know, that's, I heard that. that's the goge. I was blown away by the mellifluous laid back island sounds of the gooch. <laughs> and my goge. dad looks at me, he's like, I know gooch. Gooch, dude. I love the gooch. I love him. 
Tino, everybody. T's here, too. We got Larry over there. We got Kim. You guys haven't probably seen them in a, quite some time. We got Lindy over here, too. We're, we're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. You know, the base of Go Jimmy Go is original style, ska rock, steady reggae music from Jamaica when they made it in the 60s. But we were a band in the 90s. But you know, we're from an island as well. kind of casually knew each other from going to Ska Night at Pucks Alley uh, near University of Hawaii. Pucks Alley, yeah, the vibe, the vibe at Pucks Alley. A lot of people used to go to those Ska Nights. First, I didn't really know Larry. Somebody pointed him out across the dance floor to me at Ska Night. We're in a band with that guy. Ska was big at the time, and um, my friend Larry asked me if I wanted to, you know, play saxophone in the band. Uh, Larry, I remember I, I used to see him at ska shows, at ska nights, and I, um, I swear I saw him at my senior prom. My name is Ian Ashley, I play guitar for Go Jimmy Go, like you know. I knew Tyson, and he was talking about a band that played ska, which I didn't know what was. Tino, we found out Tino could sing. Tino Olson, who would eventually actually become um, a very major member of, of Go Jimmy Go's early days. The funny thing about Tino, like, you know, we've always known him as a guitar player, and he never really sang at first. He, he, he did a sing with Ian, backed up Ian, played leads over Ian's rhythm. He never went up and grabbed the mic. I think we kind of asked, asked Tino one day, you know, hey, can you do some uh, some background vocals? We found out that friggin' Tino could sing like a like a bird. I mean, it was just unbelievable. One of uh, my great joys uh, of being in Go Jimmy Go was listening to Ian and Tino backing up Bison. Those those three guys singing together. Uh, it still gives me goosebumps. Chicken skin. You gotta be original. I mean, you, you gotta be yourself. We're a band growing up in Hawaii, and um, we're taking this this old Jamaican sounds that we love, and all the other music that we know, you know, growing up too. Uh, that's in there as well. We're all very young at the time. Some of us are like 18, 19 years old. Some of us are like 21, 22, somewhere around there. So we're all still relatively young. Um, it was it was really good. And eventually we got to the point where we found our identity and our sound. So before you joined Go Jimmy Go, where did you come from? I was in the town of Santa Barbara. That's where I lived most of my, most of my life until I moved to Hawaii. And I was really interested in reggae, rock steady, soul music. And the, um, I'd listen to college radio. <laughs> And on the college radio, I, there was one station, there was one hour that they'd play rock steady and that what music. Then there was these younger cats that were doing music like the specials and just having fun, whatnot. And I was really interested in them playing. Loved how they could play music. I could barely play guitar. 
it, you know, I didn't know I could sing. And they asked me to sing for them. And they became the dynamic pressure. I was like, oh, shoot, I better learn how to sing. You know, because I want to do it. Like, I get an opportunity to sing in a band. That's so cool. <laughs> I better learn how to sing. And we learned together how to do this thing called rock steady reggae and ska and soul and loved it. Here's how I first found out about Go Jimmy Go. It was a group by the name of Dynamic Pressure. These dudes were the shit coming out of Santa Barbara, California, playing reggae proper, showing everybody what was up. There was Hepcat out of LA playing the ska and the rock steady, right? But there was Dynamic Pressure out of Santa Barbara playing the reggae. So we moved to Hawaii to record an album. This was after we were already getting a lot of gigs in Los Angeles and whatnot and get, starting to be, have a reputation. And we moved just, it was going to be a couple months to produce an album. We had all the equipment that we had bought and it just didn't seem to work out. We had fun and then it ended shortly. We're at the pressure house and we're playing, we're just playing parties and having fun and just meeting the people, the local people and learning the Aloha spirit and it was great. But then the band broke up and I fell in love with Hawaii. I was like, they all wanted to move back, LA, do some other stuff or Santa Barbara. And I'm like, I'm gonna stick around here, you know? And so I st stuck around Hawaii, I was having fun, surfing, drinking, and just being a kid. And so Gojimi Go asked me if I wanted to play music with him, and I was like, I had to think about it for a little bit, because it was kind of like a heartbreak from, you know, losing my other band, and like, you know. But once I realized I'm not playing music anymore, I'm like, I don't like this, I gotta play music again. So I'm like, calling them up, hey, you still need a singer? And they're like, yeah. And so we started practicing, doing rehearsals, and things were good. We all learned together just how to have fun and play music, and that's why I became a longtime member of Go Jimmy Go, because I like to have fun and play music. Hey, everybody, I want you to look back there towards the sound booth right now. Look back there, everybody. We're streaming live on the internet because there's so many people that couldn't make it all across the world. So on the count of three, I want you to say hello. Uh, Radio Free, I, I think anyone that grew up in Honolulu and surrounding areas in the 90s remembers Radio Free and the uh, sort of influence they had on people's musical taste at that time. There's a tin penny for the man. Honestly, the first time I ever really truly heard ska was on Radio Free. This little shack at the beginning of Waipahu. So Radio Free Hawaii was this entity that kind of was able to uh, put music out there. Their programming system wasn't dictated by record sales or whatever. It was it was a, a, a ballot system. They had ballot boxes in all you know all the surf shops, all, all the record stores, you know, the bookstores, and they'd actually tabulate these request forms, and you'd actually hear it a lot of these songs played. A lot of really awesome bands. We had Tantra Monsters, who were absolutely phenomenal. When you're talking about Hawaii ska, it's Tantra Monsters and Red Session. While we were all here in the 90s, we all shared bills, we all shared crowds, we all had the same fans, and it was just, it was a rockin' scene. And the good thing about it was everybody was friends. There was, there was no egos, you know what I mean? There was no, and there was no Facebook. Craziest thing ever invented. While it wasn't competitive, we were, I think, motivated by everybody else. You know, like, well, who got who got the gig to open for the Boss Tones? King Apparatus came from Canada. So the first time I came to Hawaii was in 1993 with my band from Toronto, King Apparatus. That was the tour we did with King Apparatus back in the day. So we played Pink's Garage two nights, and that was really fantastic. Hi, this is Greg Robinson from Mephiscopheles. I'm the trombone player of Mephiscopheles. 1996, when Mephiscopheles, on the strength of our debut album, God Bless Satan, 
We landed three singles on the Hawaiian Islands chart thanks to Radio Free Hawaii. We then flew to Hawaii. We were picked up in a white stretch limo, turned on the radio in the limo, and there was our song Bumblebee Tuna playing on the radio, along with a promo for the show. The next day, we did a meet and greet where we just signed innumerable cans of tuna fish. And then the show itself, which one of the greatest shows in our band's history, I gotta say, and the, and the video evidence proves it. The scene was great back in the day. Very underground. Hawaii's a little bit smaller place, a little bit more insulated, so like everybody checks out everybody else's stuff. You got hip hop heads, you got surfers, you got skaters, you got punk rock dudes, and you just got crazy people over here, and you got some college kids, you got some surf, you got it all. Between about 1992 and 1997, a lot of raves, a lot of skate jams, uh, you know. A lot of events sometimes all rolled into one. You know, you'd have a half pipe on the inside, outside would be a rave. You know, there'll be a punk show on the back of the warehouse kind of thing. A lot of warehouse parties. Um, and a lot of cool smaller venues, whether it was like smaller uh, indie coffee shops, you know, to smaller indie record stores, to smaller venues that, that actually stayed open for quite a while during that era. Go to Me Go might have been the longest lasting Hawaii ska band, right? Till just recently, when we went to the show, and they put the last nails in the coffin. <laughs> um, it all just seemed to be happening. Uh, I think uh, I think Hawaii was a buzz around that time. And we and we thank each and every one of you tonight. That was that was. If you didn't, if you don't remember, that was Fernando Pacheco. I'm Fernando Pacheco. I played trombone in Go Jimmy Go from 1999 to 2007. Uh, I've known the Go Jimmy Go guys uh, from the ska scene in Honolulu. It was a unique opportunity for me to depart from the, the punk kind of stuff that I was doing, the ska punk kind of stuff, and go to something more traditional. We now had our squadron, and it was time to start writing and recording our first album, Slow Time. Let's give it up for Tyson Bob Morris, everybody. He's gonna play a couple songs. Slow Time was probably, that's our first album, so that's when we're starting just to get our feet wet and feel each other out and see how, as musicians, we work and what, you know, what we can do together. Walking. And coming from Santa Barbara, California, which is still a pretty laid back town, Hawaii is even more so laid back. And I was living out in the country, and rightfully so, the title Slow Time is what it's all about. You know, it was just relaxing and enjoying good, good music, good food, good sounds, good beer, and let's put some words to it. Time since I've seen you Come in like a south wind at night So warm yet cool I hope you won't be leaving For surely I'll be grieving Yes, we're taking our time You and I Taking our time There is no rush now Taking our time The overall sound You, you heard a lot, a lot of different things You know, a lot of just picking here and there very experimental, very percussion heavy. He's all over that album. And that was that was an original sound that, uh, for me, just captured that era of the band. Till the sun comes up on a Sunday morning. The album cover for Slow Time. Uh, at the time, uh, Tino and Bison and a few other guys uh, lived in a house in, out in Ever Beach. Um, I think the name of the area was Howbush. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm from town. So we decided to shoot our album cover there. A bunch of us went out there and we were walking all the beach trails, walking around, you know, taking pictures here and there. And uh, we came across this, this palm tree, this lone palm tree, uh, with what looked like uh, a backboard nailed to it with no rim. And Bison being the nature boy decided to climb it and, and that's where we got that shot. And that's kind of how things usually were. Uh, us guys on the side, tripping out on whatever Bison was doing. As we walk hand in hand, side by side. Yes, we 
Go Jimmy Go, this is Curtis and Brian and Micah from Monkey. Salutations from California. Aloha. <laughs> now I remember there were some really uh, cool days in the early days. You know, gosh darn it, we just fell in love with y'all. <laughs> I remember vividly plenty of Go Jimmy Go members uh, taking showers on my lawn. So I met Go Jimmy Go during the Blue Beat Lounge era of California Ska. This was when Chris Murray had taken up residency at the Knitting Factory and had a regular Tuesday night gig where he would invite bands from all over the world to come through. Go Jimmy Go was one of the few bands from outside of California that really won the hearts of people here. You had the authentic aspect in a way that satisfied everyone. And on top of that, you had your own original vibe that uh, was really refreshing. Like there was a Hawaii feeling to it and it was also authentic jamaican music hey we're the cover ups we were an eight-piece all-girl ska band from los angeles california yeah i remember playing with do jimmy go uh, i remember we had a ton of fun hanging out dancing and you guys really brought your aloha vibe to hollywood we went on our first tour supporting our first album slow time there's this whole world that we had not seen and experienced <laughs> It was amazing. It's like the vintage sound, kind of like how we were emulating. So they have a whole scene of that. You got rude boys, rude girls all dressed up. Everybody's out and about all the shows and the, the ska scene was hitting in LA at that time. Right, LA certainly had its own sound. We had really, really, really good bands. We had such a strong scene and a very strong cultural identity um, within the city. And if we had bands coming through touring, they didn't necessarily bring a sound that, for me, connected with a certain region. And then here comes this band from Hawaii. And the first thing I thought of was, oh my God, they sound Hawaiian. And I think the thing that was so cool about it was, it was probably the first band that I realized had their own sounds. Go Jimmy Go is one of those great bands that I was lucky enough to do a mini tour with. Deal's gone bad, go Jimmy go. I jumped in the van. I don't even know how to explain it. It seemed like because of the style of music that we were all into, that we were just immediately brothers, you know? To this day, I wish, uh, you know, I had made it out to Hawaii to see them in their home home, uh, home turf. Let's put it that way. What's that? Go Jimmy go. Oh, too smooth. I can't say anything to go Jimmy Go. So Is that coming out of the light? I am Sean Gregory and uh, I play the drums and sing. I think it was 2000? I think so. Yeah. I'd come back from um, living in the mainland and playing with Red Session for a couple of years. And I just ended up being asked to play with Go Jimmy Go maybe six months after I got back. When I had come back from uh, my other ordeal, I was like, I'm never touring again. Never gonna do this again. I wanted to be stable and at home. And um, I said yes, but I wasn't gonna tour. That's what I said. I said, I'll play with you guys here, but that's about it. Yeah. That didn't work out so well. But then every now and then we play Soul Arrival and everyone was like, yeah, there you go. There you go. And like, yeah! This song seems right to play right now with all you guys out in there because I know you got a lot of soul in your heart. A lot of love in your heart. A lot of good feeling people, yes!
Like how we, we went into making our first album Slow Time with no expectations is the same thing we did for our second album, Soul Arrival. Soul Arrival to die. We were definitely changing, um, getting better at what we were doing is what I felt. We were all getting better. That was the first of a few big Go Jimmy Go moves in terms of the sound. The making of the album, we had a lot of time to do it but then it got crunch time at the end like most albums do. We try to do be more soulful. That's why we wanted to also call the album Soul Arrival. We were hooked up with uh, Mike Spengler of Moon Room Records. He basically put up all the money and we made a really good record. Shows then were crazy. I mean, just so many rows and rows of people. You know, we went from uh, in the late 90s playing punk rock clubs, you know, where you could comfortably see everyone to like, uh, you know, those in that peak of the, the soul arrival days, if you could call it that, you know, like opening up for No Doubt, you know, being on the Warp Tour, all these things where just, I'm playing to crowds where I can't see everyone, you know, it goes and goes. Yeah, the shows back then, I mean, it's hard to match, I mean, with any band. With any of my experiences after that, it's, it, was a, it was a golden time, not just for the band, but for me personally. At that time, it was, you know, peak party mode for my life. So, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. My name is Andrew McClellan, and I have played both bass and guitar in Go Jimmy Go. It was right after Soul Arrival. Sean had joined the band, and I knew Sean. I've known Sean since I was 14. We used to skateboard these ditches over here. Soul Arrival was the first album I was on. The album turned out really well. When we released it, it coincided with us going on the Vans Warp Tour. I think we went to 17 states. It just was like the whole half, the west, the whole western half to the Mississippi of the Warp Tour, <laughs> and. Um, you know, we had done a couple of tours before that, but we didn't know what we were getting into, and it, <laughs> we were not prepared for what we embarked on. And um, it was grueling. It was awesome. It was amazing. Like, I guess, like, eight, ten hours of festival every day, but there was so much driving. It'd be like 18 hours, 12 hours, 10 hours driving between that. So it's shocking. We had thought we would just go and it'd just be this easy, great rock star kind of tour. And uh, it was hard work. I mean, I had no idea. The bugger was every day and you have to uh, set up all your merch and drive. And, you know, we didn't have a tour bus. We had a 15 passenger van. It was just like rush, rush from the first minute we got there. And then like driving so much. But, and then, you know, drive, 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 play. One hour. Drive, 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 drive. Play one hour. Yeah. Playing and, and selling merch. You know, I think after the first week, we really understood that this was no, you know, this is going to be a little bit more hardcore than we thought. Um, the shows, some of them were really great. Some of them we'd be playing when Bad Religion or something was playing, so they weren't as great. And during the heat, and then having to drive to the, to, to the next date, the next day was just beyond our comprehension as island people. We just, even when we did tours, it was very comfortable. Man, you gotta remember, this was the early 2000s when we were touring and not everyone had cell phones. Um, it was this weird transition where, you know, it wasn't cool to have a pager, but not everybody had a cell phone. So you're just screwed. The, what I always tell people is like, when you're touring, you're with these guys 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're with these guys 
more than your girlfriends or your wives, your parents. I mean, everybody. I mean, you're never with them 24-7. But when you tour with a band, you're with these six, seven, eight guys, like, nonstop. And that that has a different psychology. You, you, all bands that travel together, like, and tour for extended periods of time know what I'm talking about. And... Um, it, it's it's good for everybody because you learn to live with each other and you learn how to be seen not having a home your home is your your van your tour van and your bathroom is probably in a McDonald's somewhere in San Antonio Blush in your face, no more 
I'm talking much higher. I said, no more. Take your teeth and why you try so hard, gonna please me? You please me. Tune it with feeling. Can't you see it? You know I never. You know, our shows are always very fun and uplifting and, you know, you're not going to see many fights at our shows and stuff like that, you know, because it's just the music kind of makes people smile. You know, it wasn't intended to be a tough guy thing. It was intended to, you know, let's party and, you know, enjoy life. Yeah, then and now, I mean, the scene, the scene is definitely, it kind of goes like this in waves. It seems like Hawaii is very transient. People kind of come and go. For us, like Black Square being a ska band in a city where there's only about three or four ska bands, it's been inspirational definitely seeing like Go Jimmy Go being there as a mainstay. I mean, every album we're trying to get better and better. And I mean, this, you know, Fishbowl Eyes was, uh, you know, we were, we were hitting some things in this album. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good, my brother. We can sell beer, that's right. Just, um, I really, I love, I still listen to that album. Both, I listen to Soul Arrival on that album, and I just like, whoa, these are like, go Jimmy, go classics. Oh, oh yeah, good people, them at the doorstep singing, please let them in. Open the door. Them at the doorstep singing, please let them in. Open the door. All faces warm hearted, sweetness warm. Wine is pouring to blow wing horn. So when Fishbowl Eyes came up, it wasn't such a radical change as it was from Slow Time to Soul Arrival. A good time. Everybody sounded great on that one. Everybody did their parts well. Good people, they met the gossip singing, please let them. And when someone starts doing good, it's just, it just goes around the table, you know. Then that's, you know, how that album started to just click after a while. Please let them in. Open the door. We had been around, we had been touring, we had been through it a little bit, I guess. It was still a lot of the original members were writing, so it still had a lot of that flavor. Um, Andrew had come into the band, he wrote a few songs. Ian got one of his songs on there, along with, of course, cams and bison stuff. I think, if anything, I remember it's, it's the images. <laughs> I think that became the most popular just because guys wanted to have it on their wall. All the, all the art and the promo flyers and everything from it. I will say, as much as much fun as it was to be on the tour with Go, whether you were opening or whether they were, it was like, nah, you have to be good tonight. Because these motherfuckers are going to be good. They're going to be good every night. Ian is going to be fucking shit up every night. And Fern is going to be good every single night. Eric is going to be good every single night. Cam is going to be killing it. You had to be on it. I think I hear somebody knocking at the door. Who's that knocking at the door? Let him in, let him in. Who's that knocking at the door? I'm Brandon Hudson. I play trombone and keyboard in Go Jimmy Go. I would say it's 
pre-reggae Jamaican music with, with sort of like an island feel, with a, with a Hawaiian sound. So just being able to fit into a band that was already well established and, uh, and put my two cents in and you know, get my fix on playing that old school Jamaican music. Well, I was just thinking about Bison, like he moved away from Hawaii. I imagine he's probably not gonna be involved in too much music, you know, and the years are gonna pass and people are gonna be like, Carol, we're a lead singer of a band and used to like run things on stage and dance around the way, cause he's just so quiet and reserved, like doesn't really talk much. But he gets on stage and he's just a freaking animal and it's nuts and people aren't going to believe it, you know, they're going to have to see a video and when they see the video, they're going to trip out. One thing a lot of people don't know about Go Jimmy Go is uh, we take a lot of things very seriously. We take our Halloween quite seriously. We take our sing-alongs quite seriously. We take our Del Taco quite seriously. We're quite serious about our dance moves and we're very serious about our fireworks. We had a great time with the debonairs, a little fireworks battle, you know, of course, of course Hawaii's gonna win that. Before this album came out, we had all quit our jobs. Man, it's rough for everyone to go full time, you know? Everybody, we're gonna quit our jobs and we're gonna be musicians. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's pretty crazy. People think you're crazy when you tell them that. You gotta leave it all behind to, to try and, and live this dream. Of course, it's a lifestyle change, obviously. Um, you also gotta think you're gonna be, you're gonna be in a confined area with other dudes for half the year. You're gonna have to get used to that. There's a lot of other things that you have to worry about. You know, like food, <laughs> like calling your girl. Bring a can opener. You know, clean clothes. Bring a can opener and, and a lot of Tupperware. People take that for granted, but clean clothes goes a long way, man. I really respected how much energy it took and how much financial resource even to fly seven people and some instruments from Hawaii to the mainland and then try to get some wheels. That took a lot where most bands, just getting a van and driving out of town, that's, that's a hard thing for them. It really took a lot of grit and determination and sticking with it for Go Jimmy Go to drive around the country in a series of vehicles and vehicles are problematic. But I think that by doing that, the band really made an impression. Much love to the Go Jimmy Go crew. Dude's gone wild! Do you remember meeting those guys? They taught us how to have fun on tour. And that is a fact. That is a fact. We're still at this point where this was our career. This is what we were doing. We weren't really doing anything else. You know, this is what we're living on. Not to mention the, the very literal sense of them touring the fucking world and spreading um, the island sound, you know, the world round. Japan is like being born and raised in Hawaii. We were so like similar culture-wise, you know? Um, there's the food, uh, the way of life, the spirit of friendliness and kind of aloha. You know, I, I really love Japan. It was, they're crazy fun. The clubs are smaller, but they would just pack them in there and then they just be going crazy. And, you know, and then we get in a little van and drive another couple hours to another show. And, I don't think anywhere else I've seen more crazy fans. I mean, it was uh, it was the only place in the 15 years I think I was with Go Jimmy Go, something like that, um, that we walked down the street and there was like fans holding our records and there, ah, like a lot of that kind of stuff happened there. You know, guys like really 
stoked to see us and to meet us and everything. And we liked to party, so we would just hang out with these guys afterwards and all night until you couldn't stay up anymore, you know? That was that time, and uh, it's good fun. Uh, I remember there's this one show, I think it was in Fukuoka. Fukuoka. <laughs> Asking you about Fukuoka. We were playing, and the power cuts out. And I, I don't know why. And all of a sudden, Bison grabs the mic. I don't know what to do. I'm on stage, my mic's not on. And he starts singing. It's all because of you. I'm feeling sad and blue. You went away, and now my life is filled with rainy days. Man, it was just dark. The lighters in cell phones just start going. And everybody just singing that song. Like the whole thing, it was like the whole crowd. I was like, holy crap. That was me. And then Cam, our bass player, knew how to sing it in Japanese. And Ian knew how to sing it in Japanese a little bit. So they're like, and the mics came back on now, you know, but we're not like, and juju goo and I'm just singing it that one, um, doggy fresh, doggy fresh style. <laughs> and once the lights came on, it was just craziness. This one guy was so excited. He didn't know how to control himself. And so he just pulled his pants down around his ankles. And just like, there's even a guy who took off all his clothes in front of us. I mean, all you could see was Bush, but I mean, he was crazy, man. I see these two, you know, I see these two chicks looking at him and they're like, hee hee. When I was with the Toasters and we were touring quite heavily, uh, over 200 nights a year. And one of those tours uh, was with Go Jimmy Go. We met up with them in Germany. Uh, it was a lengthy tour. I think it was over six weeks long. Starting from Germany, going all over, you know, France, the Netherlands, uh, Italy. And now we start going down into Eastern Europe. Uh, Bosnia, Serbia. Remember when we broke down on the mountainside in Bosnia? Playing Bosnia? Oh my God. How many bands from Hawaii have played in Bosnia? I bet they can all fit on this hand, that's for sure. On this finger. <laughs> <laughs> we got lost in Albania and the tour ended in Prague. Taking Go Jimmy Go to Europe was really like, a, like in, in one sense being like a kindergarten teacher because there's, there's a whole bunch of uh, guys who who had really no clue what they're getting into. And uh, doing a tour when all of a sudden you, you wake up and you're in a different country, um, having guys like constantly searching through their pockets to find out that the money they have is no good. That, that was pretty awesome. I must tell the story of when our driver uh, got the bus lost and we went to Albania by accident, which was not on our schedule. Uh, we were going from Serbia and the next gig was in Macedonia. But our fearless leader, Bucket, Rob Hingley was asleep. So uh, Rupert, the driver, trusted his GPS. Unfortunately, there were two towns with the same name. Instead of heading north, we headed south. Bucket woke up as we were entering Albania, as we were passing the many um, World War II era uh, pillboxes uh, that lined the road into Albania. Bucket also knew full well that there was no way to go through Albania because of the mountains. One must go out the same road one came in. So as the sun began to set, we did just that. We turned around and headed out of town, having missed the gig in Macedonia. And we ended up parking by the side of the road in Montenegro, somewhere in Montenegro. That was an interesting thing because we, so we ran an extension cord to this sort of uh, pizza pizza shop slash bar. We walked in there and it was all men and, and they were playing techno music and they very happily let us use their power. They gave us some pizza and um, subsequent to that, we went to sleep in the bus. The next morning, we awoke. I awoke in my second level bunk in the bus, looked out the window and saw a sheer drop down to a, a valley. We were very high up in the mountains of Montenegro. And it appeared we weren't on a real road. It was more like a goat path. I don't think a tour bus was ever meant to go on that road. Well, after I got over my initial shock and fear, got out of my bunk, I went to the front of the bus, the front lounge, where I found a couple Go Jimmy Go members sitting there drinking coffee and enjoying the view. Well, the driver, his cockpit was directly below where we were sitting. And as we would go around these switchbacks and turns, and he would try to hug the side of the mountain, we could hear him screaming. 
as we went out of the turns, he was going, ah, 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 like that. That was a tad unnerving. Strolling along, my eyes catch a short, sweet glimpse of you. And I drop my jaw, let me tell you, what is a guy like me supposed to do? For when I woke up this morning, I had no clue I'd be meeting, yeah, yeah. Someone like you, you, under starlight, under a tropical I was alone in a deep blue sea. A stranger my way. The river may I find the one I needed for me. But when I woke up this morning, I had no clue I'd be meeting. Yeah, someone like you. analogy for it is like you know I picture like you know Vikings would leave town and they would go on a pillage you know and they would come back home and there would be a feast waiting for them you know and the, the women would be waiting on the shore with their with their bodacious bosoms and their feasts of joy and alcohol and food and there'd be a big party that's what it was like when Kochi Miko came home because we'd go to these shows and the girls would be screaming, dude, and the guys would be drinking and everybody would be like, Are you? we wouldn't even ask if you're going to the show. People went to the show and that's what it was like. And then the band would come on stage and it was just like, Wah! Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing up Jader. And Jader's gonna get his groove on. My name is Jader Kalk. Played in the band from 2007 to 2010 on the bass. It's the island sound from World Around. It makes total sense because we toured everywhere. They, uh, they encapsulate what the Hawaiian vibe is and they bring it to the world. Little girl, ride on, ride on. Go Jimmy Go. The last album, or self-titled, Go Jimmy, go self-titled. The youngest album we did, I think. It came out very raw. 
the album did kind of have a theme a little bit behind it, which was just don't mess up. It wasn't evil, but it had an edge to it this time. Raise your head up high, don't let it fall, my friends. This is a whole nother kind of era, I think, you know. Um, uh, you know, different, uh, a different trombone player, uh, Ryan Cooney Mora, which was like epic, fun guy to play with. Yeah, man, it's pretty fucking garish, fucking cruise with these guys. And Jader, really good bass player from uh, Warsaw and Three Minute Hero. When you should be stretching out. The sound was way different. Head up high, you know, it's like driving reggae, which I love, you know, kind of 80s reggae a little bit you know, newer stuff. More pump in like that. I know these guys from playing in the music scene for a long time. Uh, played in some bands, Lean Ugly Guys, Pongoids, Freak Hunt, Tantra Monsters. Yeah, man. Head up high. It's telling people, you know, just you gotta, you know, when you're walking this walk that we do here on the earth, you know, do it with your head up. Uh, do you remember when we first met? I remember the gig at the book, and Rock City 7 was the opener. And it was the most wines I've ever seen in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's always amazing this kind of music, how it gets around, right? And that it gets to so many countries, so many places. We're talking about like Serbia, Asia. This music gets around. I'm sure it must be weird for the Jamaicans. You know, this guy's like a, like a bomb with a long fuse. It takes a while for it to go off in a place. Like you put it somewhere and then Five or six years later, it explodes. It's not, it, it, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen imme immediately. And you're like, oh, it didn't really go off. But then four or five years later, it does. Or decades later. Decades later, yeah. yeah. This is a love song, y'all. It just happened to be Valentine's Day. Cupid shot an arrow my way. is what you're calling me we had a good time last night and i'm glad everything went right i'm so glad you want me but i don't think you need me but i would gladly be your man your man i never knew i was on your mind on your mind glad we I love, I love, I love the sweet sound of your voice Ooh -hoo -hoo. I love, love, I'm the man of your choice Your choice you want me and now I know you need me and it feels 
We had Jesse Wagner, we had Monkey, we got Go Jimmy Go, and we got all our friends that came up here on stage and played with us tonight. And we got all our friends out there in the audience tonight having a good time. Are you guys having a good time? Wait, I can't hear you. Are you having a good time? That's what I'm talking about. We went on to three major tours. The Asia tour in 08, we got to do Europe again in, in 09. She was going all fucking around and shit like that. And we did one last, one last um, mainland tour of the US with the Phenomenauts. That was a great tour. Plus they're super nuts and their whole space age trip. Fun. We were all on the same bus. And I uh, actually got to drive it. I wore the captain's hat and I got to drive it for a little while, which was awesome. That's scary. Life can be hard sometimes where I may not always be there for you. You know I'll do whatever I can. When we went to Madrid, that was like the first show of the tour. Bro, the shit fucking blew my mind. We started playing and the crowd, you could hear the crowd and they were singing along, but they were fucking singing the fucking harmonies. I was like, How's these fucking guys, bro? They're like, show you the fucking harmonies. <laughs> it, it, was, it was pretty solid. One of my favorite shows ever was in Guangzhou, China. We were playing for the audience and I think it was their first time seeing a Western band because the girls were losing their minds literally like a Beatles fan. They were screaming, pulling out their hair and crying. In all my years of rock and roll, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I have to say Germany yeah, and Spain has some really good shows. The food and the beer, oh man, the beer in those countries in Europe, oh. I just love that about Germany. Every town has their own beer. So when you roll into town, they give you cases of their hometown beer. And so every night, Bison would get up and he'd grab one of the beers and he's like, and we love Gerlsteiner. I may not always be there before you. You know I'll do whatever I can. In Spain, they had, you know, freaking Chinese ladies uh, would be cruising around with fucking like bodega bags of beer and stuff. They would like hang out from like the bars, like after you get kicked out from the bar, they'd be like, you wanna buy some beer? Be like, fuck yeah. Don't drink that shit, man. That shit will get you hung over as fuck, man. We was drinking that, the fucking Estrella beers, and fuck, next day, bro, it's fucking mega hungs, man. <sighs> We're so, we are so lucky. Go Jimmy Go is so lucky. You know, 20 years later, and all the memories, all the tours, all the albums, all the good times, you know what? It's all the people you meet along the way. It, it's everything put together, man, that there is, there's like no regrets for anything. Could we have done things better? Yeah, for sure. Dude. Like, <laughs> if I could relive this life, yeah, we could have done so many things better. But uh, couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier. This is gonna be our last song for tonight, everybody. This is, uh, this is our last show, but thank you, thank you so much, everybody. We couldn't have done it without you. This song is for you, it's called Ease Up.
you remember they didn't have any cases for any of their guitars and we were like what the fuck are you doing they were like walking around <laughs> and it's like yeah we're touring and they would just take their bass and their guitar and throw it in the back of the van and we're like y y you guys can fly over here from Hawaii and tour California but you can't afford a $15 case from fucking guitar center I don't remember that you don't remember that shit no. One in particular where uh, involved an incident at the Canadian border, you might you might remember it. Canadian border. We're gonna be on tour with these guys and the toasters for like two months, two months. You guys decided it would be a good idea to bust over the border without stopping at the frontier. Like, go Jimmy, go, flying into the Canadian border. At that point, we'd been in there doing our paperwork. And I was, you know what? Let's get our paperwork done before go Jimmy, go shows up just so we, we can be over and done with and then we don't have any kind of issue. I look out the window and I see a van coming. Oh, no, it's them, yeah. It's just like a rinky-dink border out in the middle of nowhere. And you guys went piling through there at about 70 and got pulled over at, like, gunpoint and, and came back. And then one of the guys, uh, one of the armed custom guys, opened the door and this big torrent of garbage came flooding out the van, like empty beer cans and crisp packets and like, like dirt, dirty magazines. Beer cans, porno mags. And it was just all swirling around the feet of this guy who was just looking at his feet and nodding his head. And he's like, all right, we're everybody out of the van. And then the woman who was processing us says, uh, do you know these guys? I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I know those guys. Everybody back inside. <laughs> and we were on a West Coast tour with Go Jimmy Go, and we stayed at Bison's mom's place in Santa Barbara. There was one morning that Bison had this long blade of grass, and uh, Dave Simon, our guitar player, and I were watching him. We're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Is, what is this guy doing? And he lassoed a lizard. So one day I was hanging out at Sandy's with Go Jimmy Go and I was going down under a wave and somebody was coming on top of the wave and their elbow hit my head and it split my scalp open and this whole piece was flapping down. So all I remember was I felt the impact and I got up and I was holding my head and I felt my skull and I asked him, how am I doing? The guys are like, why don't you come over here? We're gonna go to see the lifeguards. There's an ambulance coming. So they got me in an ambulance over to Queens Hospital. And John was in the room with me as I was getting stitched up. And I got out of there, the hospital, I had a little tube out the top of my head in case there was some drainage. So yes, I have a big, Scar, unfortunately, it looks like a good part in my hair. It's, I don't know if you see that, but my head was wide open here in Hawaii. You should be laughing. This is the last show. Your going away uh, show in Hawaii was amazing. Ooh, that was so freaking awesome, dude. It was beautiful, man. All the members were there. It was like a huge family thing. It was awesome. Seeing them there in their Aloha State in front of their people, a, a sold out show, and bringing back all the old guys from different eras. Me and all of our crew around here in Oakland said, if all the Go Jimmy Go members from years past are all gonna be there, we all gotta be there too. And what a great production it was. It, it was it was an amazing experience. And all I gotta say is it's it's all here with me. It's all here with me. It's more here though. And I'm honored, man. I was a part of it. You know, I had a few drinks, so maybe I was a little over emotional, but um and even after the show, I'm talking to Ian, I'm talking to Sean and I just start fucking crying again. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. We bring back Tino for this one. And I remember my wife and I being in the crowd, and uh, they played um, Slow Time. They played Slow Time. And it's such a beautiful song, 
it's such a melancholy song. It's so pretty. Maybe the song kind of got me. It wasn't sad. Like I said, it was bittersweet. It was it was a very um, happy send off. Can I dedicate this song to all of you? This song's called Slow Time.
Jesse, we got another song, I think. The gouge. The gouge. It's all because of the gouge. Uh, I love you, man. Why do you have to go? I'd be dead if it weren't for Go Jimmy Go. Come on, don't don't tell me you're throwing in the towel. All the cats. I love all you guys. Great band all together. 100%. Yeah, man, we love you guys. We love you guys. Shoots. Aloha, Go Jimmy Go. Aloha. Hey, hey, Go Jimmy Go. Shoots. <laughs> Thanks, I Go Jimmy Go. You guys good? You guys good? Aloha, Go Jimmy Go. Thank you for all the great music. Congratulations on 20 years and thanks so much for the music. Thank you for being such great people and, you know, companions on the road. 20 years of great vibes. From Chicago and Deals Gone Bad to Go Jimmy Go, much love and respect. You guys will always be our brothers. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Go Jimmy Go. Aloha. Thanks for a lot of fun over the last 20 years. Rock on. Mahalo. Love you, brothers. I just want to say um, I love y'all. Aloha. Mahalo. You guys want to hear in between times? This is our last song, everybody. Sing along! I'm not going to argue with you. I want to argue with you. Mixed up, confused. Here's my news. We gonna make some change. Strange ways, things we say won't go away. Smiles we gave, smiles we made, we'll also stay. Yeah. Some people come hungry for the bread. I'm hungry for smile instead. Well. Everybody sing Good times, bad times All those in between times Good times and bad times And all those in between times Good times, bad times Good, 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 good times Strange ways, things we say Won't go away Smiles we gave, smiles we made We'll also say yeah Some people come hungry for the bread I'm hungry for smiling
bad times, all those in between times, good times. Good night, everybody. We love you. For 20 years, to sum it up, would just have to be growing up for me. It's just evolving and, you know, now being, now having the experience of being with a top notch band. Realize what we've been through Roses do grow in our hearts We can be so impatient Restless sometimes Never will I stray from your Good foundation, yes Soon as we get stuck in hard days We get up two days to rise And five days to fall Long shot on the rise, so we gonna take it My brothers and sisters Hard days and nights A work ahead of us Yes, we do try To get it right Yes, we will Push too hard, just might bend it Walk too slow, may never catch it Push too hard, just might bend it Walk too slow, may never catch it Moonlight's not night, I know In the morning, sun will come shining Looks, I need an eclipse To come with it So I can rest my weary eyes Only time is wise To what tomorrow may show For each day's a new day And we'll take it as it comes Yes, we will give Push too hard, just my bending. Walk too slow, may never catch it. Push too hard, just my bending. Walk too slow, may never catch it. Ooh, we, ooh, yeah, yeah. I said we so run down, run down. Ooh, we, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. I said we so run down, run down. Long been my travel. And we know there's more push to come, yeah Taking our time, yes, we'll make it right You know why? Because Feeling is good, feeling is fine We can slow down so long But don't get left, don't get, don't get left behind And I'll say, everybody Push too hard, just my bend it Walk too slow Push too hard, just my baby. Walk too slow, may never catch it. Push too hard, just my baby. Walk too slow, may never catch it. Push too hard, just my baby. Walk too slow, may never catch it. Thank you, everybody.